Hey guys, Matt here from Loon Outdoors, and today we're trying a fly called the Reaper Madness. Um, we're using a size 6 jig hook, 5.5 mil tungsten bead, and 50D Vivas, of course. So um, I'll just start by taking some wraps down the body of this uh, really short shank jig hook. And uh, so the reason behind this fly, when I grew up bass fishing, I used to fish a fly called a Reaper. We fished it on a split shot rig, and it caught tons of bass. Fast forward to now... Still would catch tons of bass, um, but I've also kind of figured out that it looks a lot like a dragonfly nymph. This is some uh, Kylie's exoskin that you see me doing weird stretches with in the back. And what I've done is I've cut this into kind of this weird little spade paddle tail. So all I'm going to do here is tie this in. It's kind of a fickle material. It's not as bad as, say, like squirmy worm but it definitely has a tendency to want to roll and move around on you quite a bit. So you want to go ahead and lash it in the best you can the first go around. Uh, the jig hook does make it a little bit tedious, but uh, at the end of all this, it'll be a really cool uh, fly. So you can see we have this big movie tail, so you could fish this under an indicator, uh, strip it if you wanted to, uh, any number any number of... Uh, retrieves and it'll work really really well so you can see i've taken uh, a dubbing loop uh, another cool way you could do this is underneath like a frog popper like on a bass pond for dragonfly nymphs but uh, you can see ergo dubbing spinner and we're creating a dubbing loop and what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this uh Khalees custom mix which is really at the end of the day just an olive ice and hair <laughs> i thought i was really creative but they already make this product so whatever. Um, and then there's some peacock black ice dub. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to alternate the two materials inside of my dubbing loop so that as I wrap and palmer forward, we're going to get a, a variegated look. So um, I'm just going to go back and forth between this uh, magic dubbing that I've told myself that I created um, and some peacock black ice dub. So you can see off off there on the on the side, what I'm doing is uh, I'm aligning every single material. Uh, I'm trying to get it, all the fibers to be about the same length, so they go into a dubbing loop. And and once you've done that and you have your little piles set up, it starts to move a lot quicker. Because this is such a short shank, you don't need a ton to create cool segmentation in this fly. Really cool thing is these bigger jig hooks are going to allow us to tie more cool patterns over like a uh, longer, you know, or a bigger shank. So there's a little bit room of, you know, getting outside of your normal size 20 or 18 or 16 pertagon or something like that. You can really start to manipulate and work with stoneflies and, and other, other such larger aquatic insects. So after the spin, you can see I'm going to go ahead and brush. It looks like there's a snowstorm of bunny fur going everywhere. Typically, don't breathe too deep because it'll just go up your nose. Um, so we'll go ahead and palmer this through. Nice turns. And we'll just start to work it back over itself as best as possible. This keeps you from trapping too much material as you just preen backwards as you wrap your dubbing loop. So if you use the different color of exoskin, say if you use like a uh, like a brown green or you know a yellow orange or whatever colors that you floats your boat, um, you know you can change your dubbings and your beads and everything to match that and create a really solid, uh, well put together fly. So you can see I'm gonna do my hand whip finish, which is what I always do, and. We're going to go ahead and tack with the dubbing brush again. So you can see you get kind of some body segmentation in there. It's a really suggestive pattern with a cool wiggly tail. Hope you guys dig it. Catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.